Hey what is up guys welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another GT7 money making method and glitched build. Now this is thanks to Raddy once again who's absolutely come out with another banger of a car in terms of dropping them under 600pp for the Tokyo grind. This one is going to be using the Dodge Charger Hellcat which is an absolutely awesome car once you've got this tuned down. So this thing's putting out nearly a thousand brake horsepower and the only downside I've noticed is that once run with assist the tire weight is a lot lot higher than any of the other builds however it's still very usable. So in terms of buying this car you want to head over into America in Brand Central go over to Dodge and then once you're in there go into the showroom and it's going to be the first car that you see. Now this is a overall a very cheap build in comparison to some of the others so the car you're looking for is the Charger Hellcat. 15 comes in at 76,800 credits so a very cheap base model and starting point now if you want to speed things up even quicker head over to your showcase and click the current car once you've got the dodge charger as your used vehicle type in radi or raddy and then it will come up with the srt8 for tokyo go ahead and put that on it will give you all the aero parts and wheel sizes and such that you will need to get this build working however if you want to do it on your own you can basically go ahead and put the following parts on the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have the wide body for this vehicle now in terms of the livery that Raddy did provide you can edit it that's all I've done however if you do want to go the long way around and you know you want to put your own parts on your own livery and such just ensure you have that on to begin with. Now in terms of the wheels and such this is how you want to run them non-standard with just a wide offset that is it you don't need to put the wide rim width on or a different diameter in terms of wheel size it won't actually drop at that point so just ensure you've got those lined up and uh, matching and that should work now in terms of the rest of the custom parts at the front it's the only option so it's type a again same at the sides type a at the rear it is standard not type a and then on the wing we have a custom wing set which is set to high um, but i believe um, you can just have any of the the kind of heights on the wings but just go for high just to ensure in terms of the parts that you need from the sports category you need weight reduction stage one and sport soft again this build can run on both softs and inters in terms of club sports it's bore up then moving on down through the list it's weight reduction stage two the power restrictor and ballast you don't actually need these we're not going to be adding ballast or using the power restrictor however if you want to play around with the build i would recommend getting them it's racing crankshaft from semi racing and the fully customizable computer as well as the lsd and weight reduction stage three and increased body rigidity from racing engine balance tuning polished ports supercharger high-end torque racing intercooler racing air filter racing silencer racing exhaust manifold down here racing brake pads racing brake kit slotted so thankfully we've got a build with decent brakes brake balance controller which you can you know tune on the fly fully customizable suspension racing clutch and flywheel then we have the fully customizable racing transmission and weight reduction stage four from extreme hydraulic handbrake this is allowing you to get the rear end out if you need to steering angle adapter you can play around with and intermediates if you want to run the inters build in terms of the tune itself, mine's a little bit different from Raddy. It's going to have extra downforce on, which you'll see. And we're going to be using the intermediates for this build. You can use the sports softs if you want to. They are quicker overall, especially once it dries out. Fully customizable suspension, 95 on the high, 7 on the roll bar. Compression is 36 at the front and 38 at the rear. Expansion is 45 for both. Natural frequency, 2.95 for both. Camber angle, 0 toe angle zero for both and then on the fully customizable diff side um, it is default settings but you can play around with that we've got the fully customizable racing transmission i've not changed this and you do not need to change the gear ratios but feel free to play around if you want again we're not restricting this current build and we are not adding ballast but we do have the fully customizable ecu installed downforce at the front i have mine at 94 and 139 i will show you the original tune a little bit later on so if you can't get it working on those settings then I will play around with it. Then we do have all the racing parts on the supercharger high end and such. So I'll just quickly take you through those. Just make sure that they match up. Um, if you kind of get a part wrong or you don't have a part on, it won't drop. We also have the um, racing clutch and flywheel. And then on the permanent mods, it's the bore up, engine balance tuning, polished ports, racing crankshaft, all the weight reductions and the increased rigidity. 
Now, this is the standard aero that Raddy has on his car. It is 29 at the front and 70 at the rear. This will cause it to drop. However, you can bring the aero up by doing the following. So it's a little bit more complicated, but it does allow you to get more grip out of the car. So essentially what you're doing is taking up one by one. This should keep the glitched amount around the under the 600 mark. So essentially what you can do is just bring it up till you get to a specific limit and then you cannot go ahead and kind of, you know, put it up even more. So you will hit a kind of brick wall in a sense. But if you do this, this does allow you to get extra aero. However, if you don't want to go with the original settings that are shown in the video, especially if my final settings don't work. So as you can see, eventually we do manage to get it up to the limit, which was, um, I believe, about 94 at the front and 139 at the rear. So that was my limit. If those, those don't work out of the box, feel free to just either use Raddy's less downforce setup or bring it up bit by bit. In terms of the event, it's obviously going to be in Asia and then go over to Tokyo Expressway, head over to the right, and it's the World Touring Car 600, the highest paying event for 12 laps. So how is this car to drive? You know, is it any good? Now, the only thing I've really noticed in terms of a downside for this car is actually that it requires you to run quite a lot of assists. If you don't run it with any assists, which is what I usually do, it's very, very sketchy, especially in the opening laps in the wet. It's definitely no fun to drive with no assists at that point. Now, in terms of your clean roast bonus and such, again, because this is a launch car, it was in the game from launch, um, it's very, very easy to basically keep that clean race bonus. Just do not hit the AI, just be extra extra careful you should have enough power to basically get past them and um, by turn one in terms of overall difficulty i highly recommend running it on hard difficulty this will reduce the amount of times you will lap the cars ahead of you you know the more time you spend in lapping them and the more time you're stuck in traffic it will absolutely destroy your time which i will show you in my strategy that i ran for this car the only downside to this is just the tire wear is rather quite high but however i feel like that was down to the assist after lap kind of four you can really turn the assist down and get a much better drive so let's jump straight into the strategy so we do have the traction control and the um kind of assist all turned on this is the best way to get through the opening lap this is a very sketchy car in the wet in terms of your power you want to keep it at fuel mix one all the way to the end of the straight this will give you maximum engine output and allow you to hit much higher top speeds than kind of nerfing it essentially what you're doing here is ensuring that you get in the lead by turn one at this point you can ride the wall there's no reason not to you won't get penalized for it i will actually show you a little bit later on where the clean race bonus can also be lost so just be mindful of that so yes, lap one, I fully recommend just ride the walls, just do it. At the end of the day, you're in the single player portion of the game. You are not hurting anyone. You are not going and doing this in a multiplayer lobby. You know, at that point, I'd say don't be that guy. But look, you're in the single player of the portion of the game. You're just trying to grind money. You're just trying to have fun, try out more wacky and weird glitch builds. So in all honesty, just drive it like you stole it, really. So the only other place that you can really risk losing your clean race bonus in terms of Tokyo and these kind of pre-update 1.27 cars is here at the last hairpin. Now, do not hit the cones and do not cut the line on either the inside or the outside. If you do that, kiss your clean race bonus goodbye. So I'd honestly fully recommend even later on when you get that to that little 200 board, begin to brake and bring the car down nice and slowly. You want to basically just be mindful of those corner uh, of that last hairpin because that is where your clean race bonus will be absolutely destroyed if you are not careful. Also, just a note, I forgot to say it earlier on in the video, but once you've got past turn one, turn the engine mode to six, this will reduce the amount of wheel spin you get. However, once you get to lap four, the track is gonna be basically at dry tires time. So this is where the Inters and the Sport Soft really do cross over. So this is where the Inters are gonna be weaker and way more, whereas the Sport Softs are just gonna be overall a much quicker tire. At this point, I fully recommend just going to Fuel Mix Free and begin to short shift around the track. This will keep your grip, but it's also as good as running a Fuel Mix 6 in terms of you know saving fuel. So the tire wear was actually really, really poor in this build. However, I do feel like that was due to me not turning the assists off. I completely forgot to. Um, so after lap kind of three, really, you can start bringing the assist down. 
At this point, you want to put a new set of tires on. So if you enter the event on the Inters or enter the event on the Sports Softs, you'll be locked into only using those tires for this event. What you also want to do is ensure that you put a fuel, full tank of fuel in the car and just go and change your strategy now to basically hammering it around the uh, the event. So turn the engine all the way up, maximum power. You'll only need to put a little bit more fuel in um, on your next stop and then you are pretty much good in terms of fuel use to the end. Now, traffic wise, one thing I did notice whilst I was running this build was that I was running into the traffic at the worst possible time. And this is on hard difficulty, you know, this car's insanely fast, you know, just be careful when it comes to lapping them, don't let them hit you. Um, it's kind of still out for debate whether you'll lose your clean race bonus or not. Some people say you do, some people say you don't, so just be mindful when you are in traffic. Now again, I took my second pit stop at the end of lap A. This time again, I'm going to put a bit more fuel in, I'm going to take a new set of tyres, and that is going to be it in terms of filling the car for fuel all the way until the end. So all I did was just let the fuel go all the way up to the top, and it's going to basically just give me enough fuel to just go maximum power output all the way to the end. I will, however, have to stop for another set of tyres. However, I think this is just due to mainly running the assist. So if someone does do a zero assist you know, run of this build, um, I will try and do one a little bit later, but obviously it'll be after this video is out. Um, just let me know what the tire wear is like when you kind of turn those assists down after the wet laps. As you again, you can see I basically just got trapped between the same AI yet again. That Audi really just, you know, getting on my getting on my nerves at this point because I felt like I was just catching them at the worst possible moments. And obviously, I'm being mindful of my clean race bonus. This is the only downside to Tokyo. Overall, though, Tokyo is always going to be faster than pretty much anywhere else. The payment and the time it takes with these glitch builds is a lot lot lower than it should be overall this wasn't the perfect run in fact far from it so yeah don't expect an overall very very fast time but that is mostly just due to my own personal mistakes so at the end of lap 11 with only one lap to go so back to go into the 12th lap i did another pit stop i don't need to take fuel this time it's essentially just a quick tire change and then you can get yourself back out on track and finish the event up so overall I did this in around about 25 minutes, which was a very, very poor time. It was kind of a mixture of, you know, overdoing the tires, having too many assists on in the later stages of the race, and just catching the AI at the worst possible time. So, yes, this run and strategy didn't really do it justice. However, I will try and go back later and try and perfect that strategy. So, if it does change, I'll put it in the pinned comments down below. So, yeah, 2540 doesn't really do this car justice. Fastest lap, though, on the Inters was a 157. So, I'm going to assume on the sports softs on the dry uh, dry track you're probably talking around about a 153 to a 155 very very easily so very good one lap pace in this build overall it's going to be 825k but you should know that by now in around about let's say 24 to 25 minutes which is very much in line with a lot of these glitch builds and overall it's a great build so massive shout out to Raddy yet again for just finding these glitch builds. He's so quick at them. You know, I mean, yesterday it took me about two and a half to three hours to try and glitch out the Dodge Viper. And this guy just seems to be absolutely able to pump them out like just no tomorrow. So I'll pin his channel in the comments. He'll be in the description as well. He's well worth looking into if you want, you know, glitch builds there and then. He's, he's massively quick at them. So thank you to him. Thank you to you guys for watching. That is going to be it from me today. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe turn those notifications on so you don't miss an upload from me out of gt7 and motorsport content each and every day for your viewing pleasure thank you to poggers and the controller people for their continued support of the channel down in the description down below i will have my uh, twitter so if you want to go and interact with me on there um, i'm always happy to take your questions and such on there as well as my discord that is the best place to be in terms of you know not only joining in my racing league and stuff and but just to kind of chat to other GT7 players in general. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all later on, guys. Have a great day. Peace.